Hello, 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 and welcome back to the SEO Mastery Summit. This time around, I'm joined by Noel Andrews from JobRec. Welcome, Noel. Hey, Matt, it's good to be here. Excellent to have you. And uh, today on this live stream, we're going to share uh, some of the magic around hiring and recruitment. And obviously, you have done a lot of that over the years. So I'm, I'm sure you have lots of interesting stuff to, to share. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You'll uh, have some fun along the way. Perfect. And I can see people are starting to join in. So that's excellent. I think we'll just give them uh, sort of 60 seconds before we, we go crazy. So they all have the chance to get moving. Uh, so as always, to all of the audience, um, you can ask questions. If you're in the live stream, you can ask questions on YouTube and so on. Also, uh, if you're watching on the event C platform, you can um, you can ask the questions within the session. So on the right-hand side, you have the questions. And feel free to ask as many questions as you will. I'll, I'll try and let Noel go through his presentation first, and then I'll bombard him with questions at the end. So uh, get your questions in early. So we, uh, we have a lot for him. So fantastic. Noel, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, and then we can, uh, we can get the magic started. Perfect. I'll be back a little bit later. No worries. Is that all good, Matt? Looks perfect. Yep. Cool. Hey, everyone. So uh, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. So I'm going to talk to you today about how to hire the best people to grow your business. Okay. And that's the key thing there is it's not, I am going to talk about hiring, obviously, but why are we hiring? It's because you want to grow your business. You might be sat there. You might be stood there thinking hiring is hard. Clue. It is. Um, but actually, the thing that you really want is to grow, right? You want to kind of earn more money, have more customers, do more things. That's kind of the uh, the priority for you. So that's what we're going to kind of help you help you do in this session. So a couple of points before we start. So I tend to speak pretty quickly. Uh, I've tried to slow down over the years. It doesn't work so well. So I'm just going to need to ask you to listen fast. Uh, and as Mad says, the recording is uh, is going to be available for you after if you want to kind of catch up on anything. Um, second thing is take what works for you. Now, I am going to be, this is not some kind of clickbait kind of talk, right? I'm going to walk you through exactly what you need to do to hire really, really great people. But you might not need or want to do all of it, okay? And that's okay. Take the bits that kind of work for you and, um, you know, that kind of resonate most. Completely okay. And then third, you know, hiring is hard, right? And I'm going to talk through kind of why it's hard and kind of uh, why that's a good thing that it's hard. But it is hard. And the key thing is you don't have to do it all yourself. If you've already got a team, you can delegate some of it. If you haven't got a team or if they're not the right kind of uh, people to do that for you, there are places you can go to get help. And I'll kind of touch on that a little bit later as well. So listen fast, take what works for you. And just remember, you have no matter how scary kind of hiring might feel or kind of how painful it might feel for you, you haven't got to do it all yourself. So why don't you listen to me? So I'm Noel Andrews. I'm the CEO of JobRack. And we help business owners hire really, really high quality remote workers and team members from Eastern Europe. I've helped businesses hire over 500 people from Eastern Europe um, with a lot of businesses just like yours. So we've helped many, many SEO businesses and kind of SEO kind of solopreneurs and solo business owners right through to some really pretty big agencies grow through hiring. And in fact, uh, when I bought JobRack back in 2018, uh, two days later, I flew to an event in Thailand surrounded by other business owners. Uh, and actually, I was, I was sitting in a talk listening to some SEOs, uh, to uh, two guys that I know well. Uh, do a talk all about kind of SEO and I was kind of really interested and they did a Q&A at the end and as part of it I was like hey I'm Noel I'm from JobRack and I was asking my question and they just kind of stopped everything uh, and went a bit crazy because their entire business and their entire team was built around Eastern European hires that they'd uh, they'd hired through JobRack so you know since those early days uh, I've worked with them a great deal more and lots of other kind of individual SEOs and agencies to help them build and scale and kind of grow really, really successful businesses. So, you know, I know uh, I know your niche, I know it pretty well, uh, and I kind of love working in this area. And, and finally, kind of, you know, I'm growing my business too. You know, I'm not done. And I know the challenges that you're facing, whether it's figuring out which of the things that you should delegate, whether it's figuring out kind of, you know, business development, kind of how do you get more leads? How do you find more customers? How should you price your services? I'm going through all of these same things myself, right? So I'm, I'm right in there with you. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm here to kind of help with the bits I can help with uh, and always kind of happy to signpost you to kind of other people that, you know, if I think you, uh, if you're looking for kind of different kind of help. So, you know, I'm kind of one of you in that sense. 
Uh, I've got 15 years plus of hiring experience from you know, really big corporate companies doing you know, eight, nine hundred million dollars a year and more right through to you know, freelancers that are just looking to hire an assistant. So uh, and everything in between. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of a little bit about me. Now, the number one job of any business owner, the most important thing for you to do is to hire great people. Lots of people kind of sometimes a bit surprised by this. But if you want to grow your business, if you want to scale your business and get it to kind of a, you know, a point where it's not just you doing all the things and spinning all the plates, then the number one job of any business owner, any CEO, any leader is to hire great people. In general, it's to hire. But really what you want is to hire great people. But if you're sat there and you're, you know, you might be running a sizable business and you might have a team already. You might it might just be you and maybe some freelancers, or it might just be you and you're doing everything and you're, you're interested in growing and earning more money and having a bigger business. But if you're not sure, you know, what if you're not sure about who or how to hire, you know, what do you do? Now, I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me and anything like the schools that I went to, then hiring 101 was not on the syllabus. That was just not something they covered right up there with financial management and entrepreneurship and running a business. They didn't teach us these things. So oftentimes we kind of do the best we can. We pick up things from here and there, or we go to talks like this one and, and kind of learn. And that's what I'm going to help you do today. I'm going to take you through the why, the what, the how, and the how, two hows, sorry about that, of you know hiring and specifically how to hire really great people to help you grow your business. Now, before we kind of really jump in, I want to kind of keep kind of you to keep something in mind. When you come to hire people, Attitude is everything. It's so, so important. Oftentimes people think they're hiring for skills, right? And you're going out to look for the people that have got the skills to do the job that you want. Other times they think they need experience. I need someone with 10 years experience in this role, right? That they've got to have that. But actually the thing that you really want to hire for is attitude because you can't change or teach attitude. You can try and mold it a little bit, but it's really, really hard. Whereas skills, you can teach. Experience, people can gain. But generally, attitude is, is pretty fixed. You can round the edges a little bit, but you can't fundamentally change it. Not without huge effort, but just being open and honest with you, you don't want to do. OK, there are people out there that have got the attitude you want with enough of the skills and enough of the experience to make your life easy. And that that is what you really want. So keep that in mind, right? Attitude is everything when you're looking to hire, especially when you're looking to hire, you know, really, really great people kind of, you know, that are going to push with you to grow your business. First off, kind of a brief little story, right? What's something that's kind of relevant for you from a kind of an SEO uh, kind of business owner. So this is Marcus. Uh, Marcus Clark, uh, he's the CEO of Searchant. And I met Marcus off the back of the SEO Mastery Summit last year. Marcus is he's based here in the UK, same as I am. And he has built up a SEO focused digital agency and a really successful one at that. He's on a seven figure run rate and he had built a team of kind of doers. Right. So people in his team, uh, including link builders and content writers and some kind of SEO analysts who were doing doing the stuff, right? doing the work for the clients that he built. And that he gained. But the problem he had is that they were all doing stuff like kind of quite SOP for uh, focused tasks. But there was no one to help him lead, no one to help him manage, no one to help him kind of engage with the clients. Right? That was all on him. And he was working way too many hours every week. He's married. Uh, he had a young baby and it was killing him. Right. Uh, he's got a cool little office down at the bottom of his garden. So his commute's not very, very far, uh, especially during kind of COVID times. Right. But it was killing him. Right. And he was working way, way too much. And Marcus realized that, you know, what he wanted was an account manager to take on all kind of customer contact. But he knew that he couldn't just put a, you know, smooth talking person in front of his clients and, uh, you know, his customers because it was all about technical SEO. They needed to be able to talk tech and talk, you know, through what they were going to do and why they were doing it and the challenges that, you know, the customer might be seeing and what to do about them. So he needed someone with both technical SEO skills and really great kind of customer interaction skills and the ability to kind of work and kind of communicate with them over Zoom, over Skype and on calls. But he also needs them to be affordable, right? Now, Marcus has got a sizable business, but as any of you know, no matter how small or large you are, it's not all profit, right? There's a lot of costs that come with operating a business. 
So he needed them to be affordable as part of his journey of, of growing the business. So he figured out and then the conversation that we had was around, right, he needed a technical SEO specialist and account manager combined into, into one role. But there was one thing that Marcus didn't know how to do. And he realized this and, and that puts Marcus kind of right at the head of the pack, right? Because generally as business owners, we always want to try and do everything. And it's often really difficult to kind of acknowledge that we have a weakness or acknowledge that there's something that we don't know how to do because you know, we're business owners. We're supposed to be able to do everything, right? That's, that's where the story goes. But Marcus knew that he, he didn't know how to hire the caliber of person, the really great person, the A player that he knew he'd need for him to be comfortable to put them in front of his customers. Now, for those of you who've never done this, for those of you that handle all the customer interaction yourself, letting someone else do this is quite scary, right? The first time, it's quite terrifying. I'm going through this at the moment. And as I bring kind of team members in, I'm hiring an operations manager at the moment. We've hired an ops assistant recently who's now doing some client updates for us. It is difficult for me to let go of the reins, right? Very, very difficult. And that's with me. And you know, I'm an expert in hiring, right? I've hired hundreds and hundreds of people for other businesses. I had a lot of people for my own. It's, uh, it's still tricky. So he knew he didn't know that. And he, so he knew he, needed, uh, knew he needed help. Now, I'm going to come back to Marcus's story a little bit more later on. But I wanted to kind of sow that seed, seed with you. That, you know, Marcus is someone that came to the SEO Summit. He was just like you, an attendee. He was watching a talk, not dissimilar to this one. And, you know, it kind of triggered something inside him that, you know, he knew he needed this person, but he knew he needed some help. Now, what's different today is that, you know, I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do to do it yourself. OK, but at the end of it, you might decide that it's too hard and, that uh, you know, you want some help. And that's OK. I'm going to kind of give you some kind of some signposts at the end uh, around. that. So let's jump in. So why should you be thinking about hiring? OK, and this is the first question. It sounds really obvious, but there are some different reasons that you should think about. So number one is, you know, to grow your business. If you hire, you will almost certainly grow your business. It's difficult to kind of hire without growing your business, but there is one kind of route. It might just be that you want to kind of work less, which I'll cover that's like kind of my last point. But generally, if you're thinking about growing your business, that's a very, very important reason and a key kind of like driver towards thinking about hiring someone to help you with that. You might want to improve the quality of, your, of the delivery. So you might be doing everything yourself. That's very, very common. And if you are, it's completely understandable. But the if you know, I talk a lot about kind of spinning plates, right? You keep the you keep kind of poles uh, kind of wiggled, kind of keep the plates just about spinning and stop them falling off. But they're generally a bit wobbly, right? If you're anything like me, there's a lot of really wobbly ones, and you kind of you know you keep them from falling off and you improve it over time. But the more people you have in the right roles, especially if you have great people, then you know there's other people to help kind of keep those plates spinning for you. So you can improve the quality of delivery, having people that can focus on it when you're distracted on other things. Hiring can help you or enable you to focus on the work that you enjoy. If you're like most people, like most business owners, you spend some of your time doing stuff that you really, really don't enjoy. I know I still do. And I'm still in the process of delegating things out. Um, you know, think about what do you really enjoy? right? And the, get guaranteed there's some things you don't. You know, other people can do them and they can do them either as well as you or possibly better than you as well, especially if you don't enjoy them. You can gain access to skills that you don't have. OK, a lot of SEO businesses are built around a founder or a CEO that was doing technical SEO or maybe still is doing technical SEO kind of work themselves. And then they kind of built an agency out of it or they started doing some freelance work and it kind of turned into an agency and kind of built out from there. It's really, really common. But that means that there's almost certainly some skills that you don't have. Often it can come into kind of like business development, sales and marketing. And so oftentimes you will think about hiring to kind of gain access to those skills. You might also want to kind of take low value tasks off your plate. Right? There might be things that you quite enjoy. Um, I know some people that quite enjoy doing their accounts. They quite enjoy reconciling transactions because it makes them feel like they've got the kind of the, the finger on the pulse of the money. Right? The money coming in, the expenses going out. You quite enjoy it. But it's a low value task. It does not deserve your hourly rate. And no matter how much you consider your time to be worth, trust me, you can delegate, you can outsource tasks for considerably less than you can generate with your time. And then finally, and I mentioned it at the top, you know, to work less. You know, we work to live. It's not the other way around. We're all kind of running businesses and building businesses to, you know, to live and to have a better life or to kind of you know, be able to do certain things. So it might be that you want to hire to either maybe keep your business at the level it's at now 
or to grow it. But it's oftentimes that you want to do that, but by working less hours, right? That was a situation for Marcus. He was working way too many hours and he wanted to wind that back a little bit so that he could get time with his wife uh, and his new baby. So these are some of the reasons that you should be thinking, you might be thinking, or should be thinking about hiring. And the most important thing, and I'm going to kind of, you're going to see my kind of Noel's top tip as we go through some of these slides. <clears throat> figure out what you want from your business and figure out what you want from your life, because then you can choose, you know, the right path for you. Okay. Is it to get some services involved? Is it to hire some people? But it helps make sure you hire the right people. You know, the path that every other SEO follows is not necessarily the right one. And crucially, if you've already hired, if you've got a team behind you, going through this process before you choose the next role for you to hire is kind of really key and can help you make the right decision to get you the right, the right outcome that you want, right? Whether it's growth, whether it's improve, make it better for kind of your customers, whether it's to let you focus on stuff that you enjoy, gaining skills, you know, taking stuff off your plate or just to work less, right? So figure out what you want, then we can figure out how we go, uh, go about getting it for you. So, you know, what roles can you hire? And like I said, you know, we're going to have all kinds of people watching uh, this session today. Some of you might just be work kind of freelancing at the moment. Some of you might just be interested in SEO or some of you might be running really, really sizable, significant businesses. And these are just some examples of the kinds of roles that you can hire to grow your business. The obvious ones are kind of the technical ones, the ones that do in SEO, right? So link builders, SEO analysts or SEO specialists, content writers, you know, they're the most common hires that we see. You might also want to jump into kind of account managers like Marcus did, you know, someone that can handle the customer interaction, customer liaison, um, but still with technical SEO skills. Right. You can get people with those with that combination. Link builders. Obviously, you guys know this way better than me. Right. They're the people the kind of the sharp end of the of our SEO businesses often. Analysts and specialists. Right. So analysts at a slightly more junior level, maybe doing the kind of SEO audits, the keyword research diving in and really kind of getting to understand what the client situation is and coming up with recommendations and you get into the specialist level people that can do those tasks but really are getting more into the strategy and are leading the kind of technical side of the implementation with your clients and, and kind of making those changes and you know, making it making it happen delivering the magic content writers you know we see a big big variety in this space i'm going to touch on some rates in a moment and kind of uh, kind of salaries you can expect to pay but content writers are a key one and these days you know we see a big variance between the kinds of content writing that you might want. You might want to hire someone to do, you know, thousand word, thousand to two thousand word kind of classical articles. Um, you might want to hire someone to do two hundred word kind of Harrow responses, for instance, for help a reporter out. Um, or you might want to hire someone to do some mega articles, you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand words, really, really, really long form stuff um, that some kind of SEOs and some businesses are kind of jumping into. So that's one of the kind of the tech. Well, that's the delivery side. But then there's maybe things that actually help you grow your business directly, right? So things like how do you bring more customers in? So you might want a marketing assistant or someone to just take all the marketing off your plate. You might someone want someone to help you with the sales side of things, just kind of sweeping up after you, making sure, you know, you're doing the follow ups with the people that you've spoken to um, or maybe even doing the sales for you. And then that leads naturally into kind of lead generation. So people that are maybe doing kind of outbound emails or LinkedIn or webinars or you know, sessions like this one, for instance. Whatever your way of reaching customers is, then, you know, you can get help for people to do. It. And then finally, and obviously this is just a kind of an example, you might be running completely different businesses, but the and you might not be even be in the SEO space. You might just be interested. But the key thing generally is you're going to break the people you can hire down into technical people to do the work. Managers, people to kind of manage the work and kind of bring in the work. Or the last category is people that can help you. Often referred to as virtual assistants, but it's whatever help you need. Personal assistant, executive assistant, virtual assistant, customer support, whatever it might be, it's OK to get help. Now, I have helped. I've hired like hundreds of uh, kind of virtual assistants uh, over the last few years. And um, it's only very recently that I actually got my own, Okay, which is quite ironic, really. You know, we've had assistants within the business, within JobRack, but it's only recently that I got my own, you know, what I'm referring to as a personal assistant, someone that I can throw all kinds of different tasks to go and learn how this system works and then kind of teach me the basics, the things that I need to know. Go and research. I was organizing a conference in London quite recently and I needed someone to kind of find me a, a bar or a pub with a garden or a rooftop, right? And that needs phone calls, right? Because some of the websites aren't that good. So my assistant, you know, she's got great English. She can do kind of phone calls for me. She's doing travel research for me. She's doing me all the kind of conventional things. 
but I'm also getting her to kind of make life a lot better in all kinds of different areas. So I'm about to do some travel. Travel's not that simple right now as we as we sit here. So, you know, she's figuring out all the kind of various regulations and procedures and paperwork for me just to help me in my life. And what does this do? It gives me back more time and it gives me a lot of headspace. So it's OK to hire people that help you, not just in the business uh, business side of things. So then the natural thing is then we say, well, how much do they cost? Right. It's all great saying I want to hire. But what if I can't afford it? So naturally, with my focus being on Eastern Europe, I'm going to give you some examples that I think are kind of really fair salaries. OK, we're not into kind of exploitation here. Really fair salaries, but really good quality people. So this is not about people that are just going to blindly follow an SOP or blindly follow the instructions you give them. This is for the kind of people that you want to hire for your business. Smart, switched on people that are you know, going to kind of push you forward right? and they're going to challenge you a little bit and they're going to talk to you really directly. So if you ask them to give you a square wheel, they're going to challenge it and say, hey, hey, boss, did you mean that? Did you really mean that? Or what about this? And they're going to come with solutions, not just come in with problems. And that they're the kind of people that, that we focus on hiring and that I always recommend that you focus on hiring the same. So link builders, you know, they're going to start from kind of five, just five dollars an hour. But again, really, really good quality people. Um, SEO analysts, typically kind of six to ten dollars an hour. OK, so these again, they'll have like one to two years of SEO experience. Um, sometimes people choose to find people that have just got an interest in SEO and choose to train them themselves. It's very possible. But you can get really, really good people with really good experience for you know six to ten dollars an hour at the analyst level. And then SEO specialists, like I mentioned, that are doing that kind of strategy level, really leading the technical side for maybe kind of ten to twenty dollars an hour. Obviously, that can go up. The sky's the limit, depending how good they are. But you can get some amazing people uh, from Eastern Europe for kind of ten to twenty dollars an hour. Account managers, like I said, Marcus's example, including kind of technical SEO skills, typically from around about two thousand dollars a month full time. So that's about where are we at? Kind of twelve dollars fifty per hour. Generally, they're more commonly full time, although they don't have to be. But it's kind of more common to bring someone like that on uh, kind of full time, especially. And they can often, you know, act as a bit of a specialist as well um, and do a lot of the technical world uh, work whilst you're kind of whilst you're building up. Content writers. I hired a content writer for myself a, a few months ago. Uh, we do it for clients an awful lot. But, you know, I was seeing ranges, people coming to me and pitching their kind of their writing to me at between $20 per thousand words to $200 per thousand words, which is a huge range. And the quality of what they did didn't always go in line with the rate, which is really, really interesting. But typically for kind of good quality, I always recommend about from about $30 per thousand words upwards, depending what other extras you want them to do. So how much focus do you want them to do? You know, how much of the SEO optimization work do you want them to do? Do you want them to find images? Do you want them to do the brief and the research? Do you want them to kind of load it into WordPress and even publish it for you or for your clients? So all of those things are possible at, at kind of those kind of rates. Marketing, sales, kind of lead generation, you know, very, very commonly you can hire people to do the kind of do the work for you, right? Do the tasks. Um, and that can start from just like five dollars an hour. Obviously, as you get into if you actually want a salesperson actually doing the calls, that's going to be a little bit more. But, you know, getting a lot of the work off your plate that you're doing or maybe not doing right now can go from just five bucks an hour. So, you know, that can uh, kind of really, really make a difference and kind of get a lot of things moving. And then finally, you know, people to help you kind of personal assistance, executive assistance, you know, typically from like, again, from five dollars an hour. Um, I always recommend if I'm hiring for a kind of a, a really good assistant, I'm normally looking around a thousand dollars a month. That's US dollars. And that's for full time, 40 hours a week. So that's typically around six dollars an hour. And for that, you're getting people that are really experienced, that are really, really switched on. And again, it just, you know, think independently and kind of push things forwards for you, not just be waiting for you to come up to solutions. They're going to be solving problems for you. And kind of a top tip on there. I mean, you know, I, I give you these rates as an example. They can vary a little bit, but, you know, we can hire people at these rates and really good people. But the key thing to remember is you don't have to hire full time. Part time can be a really great start. You can kind of get, you know, you can get a huge amount done with someone who's working half time, you know, 20 hours a week, which is kind of four hours a day typically. You know, lots and lots of people with a full time job want to earn some more money, have plenty of time in their day to do it. You can get some amazing results with people that are working part time, which then lessens the cost for you, especially as you're kind of still building and uh, kind of increasing. Or if you don't have the kind of the work or the demand for someone to be to be full time. So so we've covered through there, you know, kind of why you should hire. And then we've covered through, you know, kind of what roles you can hire and how much they're going to cost. Now, what we want to get into is how to hire them and how to hire the best people. Now, first of all, you know, this guy here, OK, he might be 
your next rock star, okay, your next A player. He's probably not because he's probably a model and, you know, it's just an image. But this is what you're looking for in the sense of you're looking for an A player. You're looking for someone absolutely, really incredibly switched on that's going to drive your business forward, right? And I'm going to keep repeating it. Rock star, A player, ninja, superhero, whatever you want to call them, whatever word works for you. You just want a really, really great person to come and join your team. But why? Why is this important? Okay. Why do you want an A player to join your team? And as much as I wouldn't expect any of you to say, well, that's okay. I'm all right having a, you know, a Z list person, a Z player, right? Z player, that thing. I don't know. But, you know, why do you want an A player? Well, a couple of key reasons. Again, some of these images, it's a bit cliche, right? But it's really important to recognize it. The team here are all pulling in the same direction. And that is what you want. And that's what you need. Okay. What you definitely don't want, and it's reasonably rare, thankfully, but it does happen. And I'm sure you've all seen it, is when you've got someone at the other end of the fire truck that's pulling in the opposite direction. Right. There are people like that, that they're just not a good fit. It's not that they're bad people. It's not that they're kind of no good. It's just they're not the right fit for you and your culture and your business and, and your customers. So you definitely don't want people like that. But what's much more common is people that are, imagine that there's someone here and they're attached to the middle of the rope, but they're pulling sideways, okay? They're kind of pulling sideways, they're pulling the team down and it can be quite subtle, but they're just not the right person. They're not the A player that you need in their role in your business. You need to have everyone pulling together, helping you get to you know, where you need and want to get to. You want the people that are going to stand out, right? The people that amidst everyone else who's dreary on a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon and they just can't wait for the weekend. You want the people that are enthusiastic, that are switched on, that want to do a good job and that are really committed to you. You want the ones that want to grow, not the ones that just see it as a, you know, a path to you know, the evenings and the weekends. Right. People often talk about shower thoughts. So you know, when we talk about the difference between hiring full time versus part time, one of the key things that we think about and talk about is that if you hire someone full time, you often get their shower thoughts. So when you're in the shower in the morning or the evening, they're kind of thinking about their day ahead and they're thinking about you and your business and their job and how they can do it better. Now, we have actually get, got kind of instances where we see that with part time people. But what makes the difference is when you're hiring someone, you know, an A player, you're hiring someone that really wants to do a great job, that sees the opportunity for growth, sees the opportunity to help you grow and in turn can help them grow as well. These are the people you want. Okay, these are the people you want in your team because, man, they make running a business so, so much better. But you do also need balance. Okay, if for any of any of you into sport, you know, if you look at a a football team or a UK football team or a soccer team, um, you can't have a team of people all up front trying to short kind of score goals, kind of shoot all the time. You've got to have defenders. You've got to have mid people in midfield. You've got to have people in goal. You've got to have people in all the roles. And so you need balance. But you can have an A player in every single one of those roles. That's absolutely possible. It's just they're an A player in that way. It's not, you know, an A player is not someone that's outgoing, that's uh, kind of an extrovert, that's shouty and bouncy and bubbly all the time. That's not it. If it's an analytical role, an A player is someone with incredible attention to detail, okay, that is really going to go into the detail, that is, you know, um, really conscientious and really focused. They might be much, much quieter. They're still an A player. It's not about the ones that shout the loudest. So you want to find balance, right? But ultimately, you want an A player and you want A players in your team because they make running your business so much more satisfying for you and so much better. So let's get into it, right? How do you hire an A player? So step one, figure out what you need, okay? So what are the outputs that you want them to deliver? What is it that they're actually going to do? What's the experience that you want them to have? Okay, what do they really need? And if it's more than about five years, just challenge yourself because experience can often be a bit like dog years, right? Okay, one year experience in one type of company could be worth five or six or seven years experience in another much more kind of slower paced company. So think carefully, what experience do you want or need them to have? What's the attitude that's right for you, your business and your team? Like, what do you need? What do you really need them to, um, to be like? Have you got any particular things around location? or kind of working hours or particular skills that you need that's going to kind of, you know, impact, uh, you know, how and who and kind of where you hire. So, you know, what do you need in in this sense? What level of person do you need, right? Is this a a doer, right? Is this someone that's going to think and kind of manage or is this someone that's going to lead, really kind of do strategic stuff, visionary, you know, really pushing things forward? So what kind of seniority, what kind of level of role is this? And this isn't just about now. 
what about the future? What about in kind of three months time or six months time or a year's time or a few years time, right? It's often difficult to look far, too far ahead in the future, like a couple of years, that could be pretty difficult, but you might have a really clear vision of where you're going, but you're not hiring for right now. You want to be hiring for someone that's going to stay with you for the long term. So you've got to be thinking about what, do you, what are they going to need to be able to do in six months or 12 months at least, okay? Really, really key. Because if you don't think about it, they definitely will be, right? They want to see where they're going and what their opportunity is. Again, my top tip here, right? Figure this out before you start to hire. If you want to waste a whole bunch of time and money, then ignore this bit, just crack on hiring, right? And what will happen is either you'll realize halfway through the process and then you'll come back and you go, oh, hang on a minute, I need to figure out what we need. Or you'll go all the way through the process, spend a bunch of time, bunch of money, you'll hire someone and then later on realize that they're the wrong person. And then you'll have to exit out of that, which is always tricky, um, and then go back to square one. You really don't want that. So, you know, this can be done in like 15 minutes, right? You can get a pad, uh, kind of pad of paper and a pen. You can just be scribbling it out. It doesn't have to be like really, really long form or anything. You just think about what's the things you actually want them to do. So step one is figure out what you need. Step two, and this is one that's often missed, right, is figure out what they want. And it's a bit crazy, but just keep in mind that this is just as important as what you need, right? Because you need to be able to give them what they want. Otherwise, you know, they won't give you what you want. And uh, that's like an old kind of famous Zig Ziglar quote. You know, you can have anything in the world that you want, so long as you help other people get what they want. So what's a, an A player going to want? What's a really great hire going to want from you? They're going to want a fair salary. They're going to want interesting work. They're going to want the opportunity to grow and develop in their role and in their kind of career and in their life. They're going to want a chance for training and learning, again, to kind of develop their skills, but specifically around kind of, you know, always increasing their skills and time to do it. They're going to want to work with great people, okay? As much as many of our teams will be remote and may stay remote, right? But they want to work with good people. They want to work with other A players, other interesting people that are supportive um, and compassionate and that will kind of help each other out, right? And they're all pulling in that same direction, like that kind of fire truck image, right? Everyone's pulling in the same direction, heading towards a kind of a common goal and common vision. And they also want a little bit of you and a little bit of your magic because you are special. You're running the business, right? Whether you're freelancing right now and taking that step into your first hire or whether you're CEO of a seven or eight or nine figure SEO agency, right? You have some magic and they want that, right? They want to be exposed to it. They want to learn from you uh, and kind of get a little bit of that kind of magic to rub off on them. So these are kind of some of the things that they might want, right? And it's important to recognize that. And like I said, you know, what they want is just as important as what you want and as what you need. So then you need to think about, well, where are they now? Okay. And especially when you think about particular skill sets, particular levels of education, or particular kind of language or kind of time zone requirements, that might affect, you know, where you look to hire and where are they? So there might be roles that you feel that you need to hire where your customers are. So if they're in the US, the UK, Australia, Canada, Western Europe, maybe that's where you look. You might need kind of specific countries for specific languages, for instance. So, you know, we recently hired, uh, we had a customer, he needed a French speaking e-commerce operations manager, right? Because they uh, were operating heavily in, in France. Now, to get someone that speaks French, you don't have to go to France. You know, we hired, some, we found some amazing people in Eastern Europe and he got an absolutely incredible uh, kind of woman to come and work in there uh, from Eastern Europe with great French. But other languages are a bit trickier. OK, so sometimes the language you want them to speak might, you know, constrain you a little bit. Um, you might be looking in the Philippines, you know, long kind of a, a kind of a great destination for kind of hiring of certain roles. You might be looking in China, especially if you're into kind of, you know, if you're running a business or liaising with businesses out there, especially as kind of the, the market booms for kind of serving those kind of uh, those kind of areas. You might be looking in Eastern Europe, naturally, uh, a kind of a, a firm favorite of mine, um, which is, it. you know, the reason I bought JobRack is because Eastern Europe is a sweet spot between cultural alignment, direct communication, really great education and kind of technical skills, um, but also with, you know, low cost of living compared to much of the Western world. So therefore, you know, very affordable and you get great value as well without any kind of sense of exploitation, you know, really, really fair salaries for them and, you know, allowing you to grow your business and scale it kind of earlier. Or you might be thinking somewhere else, South Africa, India, Mauritius, Latin America, all kinds of opportunities. But think about, do you have any particular requirements? You know, because what you need to make sure you do is look in the right places for the right people. So 
we've covered there, you know, what do you want? What do they want? Where are they? So you've chosen kind of where you're going to hire. There's all kinds of hiring services out there that can help you, whether it's advertising on job boards, whether it's, you know, paying someone uh, to help you hire. And, you know, obviously we can help with that here at JobRack. Um, but whatever happens, then you might, if you're doing it yourself, you're going to need to create a really great job advert. And like I said, you don't need to do it yourself, but you know, many of you may choose to or may want to understand how to. So what makes a really great job advert? Well, you know, you can jump ahead if you want to kind of later on and you can check out jobrack.eu slash job slash one, two, seven, four, the, the links are in on the screen there. And that's an example of a really great advert that we've put together recently. And that's got all of the kind of sections that I'm going to cover here. But it's really important for you to include a summary about the business, right? Sell the business. You know, what is what are you about? Where are you going? What are you proud of? What have been some of your achievements, for instance? And you've got to get them excited. You know, if they were applying to Google, they're probably excited already. Google, Apple, Facebook, Netflix, you know, they're going to be excited about working for those companies. They probably haven't heard of your business, right? Maybe they have, but they probably haven't. So you've got to kind of sell it a little bit, kind of get them excited about it. Where's the business going? Why should they care? What's the team like? Things like that. So give a nice little summary about the business. Then it's time, you know, make sure you talk about the role, obviously, you know, and sell it. OK, I don't care how much you hate the work that you're hiring for. They might love it and hopefully will and kind of almost certainly will. Right. There are plenty of people out there that love to do the work that you don't like to do. So you know, make sure you sell the opportunity. There is hot demand for the really, really great candidates right now. So you need to really, you know, this is like a sales page, right? You are selling the role and selling the opportunity to work for you. You know, it's super key. So make sure you kind of sell that to them. You're going to have a section where you talk about them. OK, what's their skills? What's their experience? Um, what do they need to be able to do? Tools that they need to be familiar with, things like that. OK, what is it about them that's going to make them right for the role? You're going to want to cover off, you know, what will they be doing? So I often use a heading along the lines of, you know, if you've been working with us for the past few weeks, then you might have been doing these tasks. In the first few months working with us, these are some of the things you're going to be focused on. OK, you can give them a little hint of, of what that's going to be about. You definitely want to cover off what's the opportunities for them. Training, learning, development, career growth within the business. And even if you think there's not much opportunity, right, if you're hiring a link builder, well, there's tons of opportunity because they can, you know, aspire and learn and grow to become an SEO analyst. Right. And then up from there in all kinds of roles. But it might be a really senior role. But whatever happens, you're going to invest in them and help them to develop to be better and kind of support you better and, you know, offer the opportunity for them to shape their own future within the business. Right. You want to grow your business almost certainly. Uh, maybe you want to work less. So there's always a way to give opportunity. And finally, make sure you cover off how to apply. I'm going to cover a little bit of this in a moment, but always kind of cover off, you know, how do you want them to apply? What do you want them to tell you? What do you want them to do? Um, and I always recommend using an application form. And I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. But in your job post, always include how to apply. Like I said, there's a link there um, that you can check out uh, an example of a uh, kind of uh, a good, great job post, in fact, that you can copy if you uh, if you want to. Don't, you don't have to do all those kind of snazzy graphics that we do. You know, we match when we're doing our kind of done for you and done with you service. We match the branding to the client. We want our job post to really pop out and grab attention. It's not essential for you. You know, you can just main thing is cut, kind of convey the right information. So you've got your job post. You've written it out. You've posted it somewhere. Uh, or if you've got someone to help you with it, you know, they've done it all for you. Right. And you can just sit back and, uh, and kind of uh, approve it. But let's say you've posted it somewhere. Now you've got some applicants coming in now. The best thing I can kind of bit tip I can give you is use a Google form or a type form or something similar as an application form. Right. So they read your job advert, they click apply and they go through to fill out a form that's going to kind of answer a whole bunch of questions for you that you want them to have to put a bit of effort in in order to apply for your role. And I often include at the top of the uh, top of the application form a line that will say something like, you know, I'm going to invest more than ten thousand dollars or more than twenty thousand dollars or more than thirty thousand dollars in you over the next 12 months if you get this role. Therefore, I'm looking for a bit of effort from you. If you don't think $20,000 is worth a little bit of effort applying for, then no worries, you're not the one for me. And I leave it at that. So I want people to put some effort in, I make that clear. We'll have all the kind of normal questions, you know, what's your current job, upload your CV, um, things like, you know, why do you want to leave your job? What's the best thing, what's the worst thing? All very standard. But then we'll actually include some like mini test questions, right? Um, you know, we might ask them about, you know, what are they excited about, about the future of SEO, for instance, right? What do they understand about certain phrases, for instance? And so what we're looking to do is help give us the information we need 
and for you in this case, for you for you to do the same, to be able to filter them out really easily and know the ones that kind of should be taken taken forward. So once your applicants coming in and they're answering your questions, um, it's time to score them, right? And you want to choose the best to kind of go forward to the next stage. Now to score them, it's nice and simple. They're basically either not good enough, good enough, or great. Don't need to do anything more complex, trying to score them out of 10. If they're not good enough, you just disqualify and reject them nicely, but they're just not good enough. If they're good enough or great, then brilliant. You know, and, and I typically score in a few different categories. I'll typically look at, um, you know, what's their English skills like? Is it good enough for me? Um, what are their technical skills? And what's the effort that they've put into the application? You know, I'm looking for their attitude and that they're keen and, and interested. Once you've got your kind of short list, um, you can kind of reject and gently let down the ones that uh, you're not going to take forwards and take the rest forwards to into, uh, into testing. And so I would always kind of recommend test the candidates that you're looking for. Um, sometimes you might do a short screening interview first, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes just to get a good feel. Are they right, the right fit, depending on the role? Or you might look to test them first. So always kind of come up with tests that are representative of the role that they're going to be doing. So some scenarios, things that they can do in somewhere between maybe 30 minutes and two hours. Always offer to pay them for the test so that they don't you know, think that you're kind of just looking to get free work and that they're wasting their time. Um, a lot of them won't take you up on it. They won't want to be paid. And that's great. But if they do, that's, that's perfectly fair. They've done work. But just by you offering to pay them just sets great expectation uh, up front. Once, you know, give them kind of normally give them kind of five days or so to do the tests, ideally over a weekend because they might have a full time job right now. And then once you get them back in, review them like thoroughly and carefully. Right. Review all the information you've got from the application form, their CV and the test that they've done. And from there, you can choose your kind of you know, who you want to take forward uh, into an interview. Now, again, if you're like most people, you might be quite nervous. You might not enjoy interviews. You might be quite scared of going, oh, I've, I've no idea what I'm doing. They'll know that I've no idea what I'm doing best advice I can give you is just spend time preparing and try not to worry about it because they are more nervous than you, right? Genuinely are. All you're looking to do with an interview is have a conversation with them and kind of dig a little bit deeper into the areas that you need to understand to know if they're right for you and right for the job. If you can, interview with someone else. So if you've got a team member or a peer or another manager in your business, great, interview with them. If not, maybe see if you've got a friend or another business owner that might help you out in exchange for you helping them out in the future. Having two of you on an interview can really help because one of you can really be concentrating, looking at how they come across. How do they answer the questions? How do you feel about them? As opposed to trying to kind of, you know, ask them questions, listen to what they say, make some notes, etc. So if it is just you, that's completely OK. But just try and limit how many notes you make, you know, just kind of the, capture the key points and really look at them and pay attention to kind of how they're coming across. Like I said, don't make it an interrogation. Make it as much of a conversation as you can. And then the very final stage, hopefully you've done your interviews. You've got some really, really great people. And I always say that you want them to be a hell yes, right? If you're on the fence, if your spidey sense is tingling and you're not really sure, trust your gut instinct, right? Um, you know, you want them, like I said, they're either hell yes or they're a no. When you've got a hell yes, you want to offer the job to them. But one stage first, you always should reference check them. So reference checking is when you ask them for a reference so a former employer uh, or someone that can kind of vouch for them and give you some honest kind of view of, you know, how they work um, and would they hire them again. So previous employer is, is generally perfect. Um, I always set the expectation right from the front in the job post that we're going to be taking up references. Um, and it just kind of makes sure that people are aware of that up front. So if they've got anything to hide, it kind of puts them off. 99% of the time people don't. But every now and again, we catch something out that's a bit odd and we just want to dig into. It doesn't mean they're not the one, but you might just want to check into it. So always, always take up references. Top tip for this is, you know, do not rush this stage. If you're looking to hire a long term team member, then it should take you at least two weeks to hire. OK, quicker than that. And you're probably cutting corners unless you dedicate all of your time to it. But really, this, you know, this does take time to get the right person that's for you. That's right for you. Long term takes a little bit of time. Right. Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, employers and clients kind of come to us and kind of hire within two days. And then surprise, surprise, a couple of weeks later, they let them go and they hired again. And it's like, whoa higher slow right that is the kind of key not necessarily too slow but you know that should take a few weeks so then you've got through all of this right kind of like and kind of if you're thinking to yourself Phew, this is this is a lot and, and it's because it is but i'm breaking down a lot in a lot of detail here and and if uh, if you want kind of a kind of a step-by-step -step guide similar to this then you can head to jobwrap.eu and in our resources section we've got a, a how to hire remotely guide that steps you through all this as well 
So you've got your hell yes, and it's now time to secure them, right? So you're going to choose the one and you're going to offer. So like I said, trust your gut instinct, right? Okay. If there's something off, then just trust how you're feeling about it. But you've got the one you want to offer. Consider your offer and give this a little bit of thought before you make the offer to them. You know, what's important to them? Have they give, given you any indication about that they want something particularly that holiday is more important to them than money or there's a particular amount of money they're looking for or flexibility or anything at all? Maybe they've given you some hints or maybe they've been open and talked about it during the interview. So think about what's important to them. When you make the offer, if you can, do it on a call, on a video call and spend a little few kind of a minute or so to kind of basically praise them, make them feel good, make them feel good about why you're offering them the job. Not just that they're one of the ones that's good enough, but actually you really enjoy talking to them. You're really excited at the idea of working on them, with them, and that the, uh, the quality of their test was just really, really great. Okay, so make them feel good. And then, you know, emphasize that's why you're making the offer and then make the offer to them. Invite questions from them. Okay, give them a chance to ask you questions um, about what's going to be involved uh, and make sure you want them to be really happy. This is a two way decision, right? You know, their rent or their mortgage is going to be dependent on you, know, you paying them every, every month. So, you know, they need to be really, really happy about that. You may want to discuss the startup plan. So if they've got to give notice to their current job, how much notice do they need to give. Um, so discuss all that side of things and make sure talk about the money. OK, talk about how much the, the uh, kind of you're proposing to pay them, how often and talk about the method so that it gives them a chance to re kind of reduce the fees uh, that they're going to pay. Especially important, you know, when you're kind of transferring money kind of across cross borders and across currencies. Uh, I'm a big fan of wise.com, which was formerly TransferWise. Payoneer is also very widely used. Um, generally avoid kind of PayPal or recommend avoiding PayPal because the fees can be pretty high and they can often hold on to money for like an extra month or so, which isn't great for your employee. So discuss these things, be really, really open. And then just make sure that you prepare a simple contract or kind of service agreement as it normally is. You know, generally a lot of the kind of remote employees you'll be hiring will be kind of team members. They'll work under a service agreement. They will be a lot less likely to be kind of a legal employee uh, unless you happen to be hiring in the country you're registered with or unless you use an EOR company, like an employer of record. But generally, you're going to be hiring them kind of as a you know, legal freelancer. They're going to be self-employed, but have an agreement between you that sets expectations and gives them some feeling of security. So cover off payment, holiday benefits, a little bit kind of non-disclosure and confidentiality, just setting clear expectations of how, how you're going to work. Again, top tip, figure out what's important to them and adapt to it if at all possible and kind of talk to them about it. So congratulations, right? If you followed these steps, if you've been doing it yourself, you've hired your very own A player. But it's not over. How do you keep them? Okay, you've got them, but now you've got to keep them. So last step, right? Keeping your A player. First thing is invest time in onboarding them, right? Really, really spend time. If you imagine if they were coming to work with you in an office, you'd really be spending time with them. You'd spend the first morning with them. You'd probably go out for lunch. You'd have some coffees. You'd load lots of kind of casual conversations, making sure they're kind of up to speed and, and kind of, you know, feeling good. So you need to do this and be really intentional about it when working with people remotely, okay? Set clear expectations, discuss them often. Um, and kind of, you might have to learn how to delegate work, right? I know for me, it took me a long time to actually slow down to be really clear about the task I'm delegating and what I expect and putting in enough detail and not, you know, assume knowledge. Now, really great people will kind of work with ambiguity. It won't be a problem. They'll just ask you questions when they need to. But there's a minimum standard that you've got to put enough effort when asking them for something. Allow mistakes, right? And create a culture where mistakes once are okay. Okay, don't have them so terrified of making a mistake that, you know, they're kind of five times slower than they should be or that they never think out of the box because, you know, they're terrified of, you know, what will happen. So encourage creativity. I kind of, you know, mistakes are great, uh, really genuinely great. You know, some amazing things can come from them as long as they then improve uh, from them. And, and this is a bit of a kind of a, can be an uncomfortable area, but don't have them so terrified that, you know, you constrain them too much. Give them autonomy, like creativity, room to play, room to maneuver, room to make things better, right? You don't want them just doing what you tell them. You want them making it better. Make sure you're interested in them, okay? Learn, you know, get to know them as a person. What makes them tick? What do they do in the evenings, the weekends? You know, what do they really enjoy at work? What do they enjoy a little bit less? Can you kind of cater to that? And above all, listen to them, right? Hear what they have to say. Um, you've hired them for a reason, to so give them opportunity to kind of really kind of put their, put their thoughts forward. And, and it requires constant communication. You know, running a remote team is difficult, right? It is harder in some ways than within an office. 
but in many ways it's dramatically better so this is often the hardest part but it's so worth it because when you have a high performing team it is awesome and your business grows which is ultimately what we're all after so does this sound hard if it does good it is okay hiring is hard there's no way around it but it's your number one job as a business owner and as a ceo okay now you don't have to do it yourself okay i'm going to come back to marcus right we said earlier on right he knew his strengths and he knew hiring wasn't one of them but he wanted a really great hire he wanted a rock star and an a player <clears throat> and he knew that he didn't want to spend months trying to do it himself okay trying to learn it as he went distracting him from the day-to-day -day business and working even harder than he was and seeing his, his wife and his new baby even less so he did what his customers do right he went and found an expert he went and found someone that could help him uh, and in that case that person was me so you know marcus and i spoke and and he asked for our help and he said you know how can you help me and we talked through what we call the done with you service okay where we take all of the heavy lifting right so everything we've talked about there around creating a really great job post finding and going out and sourcing really great candidates and getting them to apply, filtering and reviewing them, all of that side of things, you know, we took all off his plate. All Marcus had to do was kind of review the shortlist, agree with the ones we recommended that he went forwards with and interview them. And we gave him a ton of guidance on how to do that as well. And what this helped him do was helped him to hire an amazing guy from Eastern Europe. Um, the, his new hire started and has enabled him to step back from all customer interaction. It's made a huge difference. And Marcus has more time in his day, in his week, and he's spending more time with his, with his family. And if that's not enough, the new guy that came to work for him in his third day identified improvements to some process and some ways that they were working that would immediately save 3,000 US dollars a month. And that's on his third day. OK, great little story. Love that naturally. Now, I spoke to Marcus this week ahead of uh, doing this talk. Um, and, you know, his top tip is know your strengths, right? As an SEO business, himself, business owner himself, his top tip is know your strengths and get help with the areas that aren't your strengths. And if that's hiring, then, you know, get help to find the best candidates. So two questions for you, really. Do you want to grow your business? And do you want help to grow your business? And if hiring is the thing that's going to help you grow, then I'd love to help you grow your business. I'd love to help you hire some really great people. And so we've got a special offer for all attendees of the SEO Mastery Summit. Um, like I said, our done with you service, which is where we take all of the hard work for you, um, starts from just $1,500. So if you want a kind of a lower level role, kind of virtual assistant, link builder, SEO analyst, it's just $1,500 US dollars. But for everyone that's kind of attended the summit, we're gonna, you can save $250. Okay, so you can save $250 from all of our done with you services. If you want a more senior person, it's normally just a few hundred dollars more. So typically around $2,000 for SEO account managers, really, really good people on salaries of around kind of two to $3,000 a month. So if you'd like some help, uh, if you'd like some help hiring and finding the A players that are going to come and work for you, you and your business and help you grow, then you can save $250 and simply head to jobrack.eu slash SEO uh, to learn more. And you can book in a call and we can talk through how we can help. So I really, really hope that's been helpful. Uh, like I said, the offer's there. It'll be in your inbox as well. Love to help you hire. Love to help you grow your business more than anything. Uh, we have a really, really good time when we're enabling people to do that and um, love to do that with you as well. Um, if you've got questions, we've got some time and I'm sure Mads will jump in in a moment. Uh, but if you want to get in touch with me directly, um, there's some resources at jobrack.eu, including our how to hire remotely guide. Um, and you can get in touch with me directly at jobrack.eu slash noel, N-O-E-L. Uh, all my emails there on screen, noel at jobrack.eu. Oh, Mads, you're on mute there. Right? I'm on mute. I just realized <laughs> that. So thank you very much, Noel. That was uh, super good. That was super good. And yeah, uh, hiring is definitely not second nature to most SEOs. I can definitely vouch for that. So um, yeah, I, I think one of the big takeaways, and, and that's one of the things I've seen as well, is um, when people hire, particularly in slightly lower cost places, um, they often treat their employees different, right? And one of the key things that I always say is, wherever in the world you hire, they're an employee, right? It doesn't matter if you pay them $2 an hour, $10 an hour, or 50 bucks an hour, right? If you want to grow your business, you always have to yeah, make the most out of it. And you do that by really treating everyone like like real employees, right? Yeah, So uh, a few questions. So I'll just put up some of these ones here first. Uh, so now Andrew is passing some great advice here. Take notes. So I hope people taking notes. 
This one, I know we do guest posts. All our clients are from word of mouth and friends. We try to promote it on job boards, but it's always a race to the bottom. How can we stand out on job rec? So, I mean, you don't really take services as such. So I guess this one isn't super relevant, but if we take it, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, by the sounds of it, that's kind of Andre, you're more looking kind of how do you get clients? Um, but if you're looking, you know, in general, if you're when you're looking to hire people, standing out is really important. You know, and we kind of talked through there about putting the effort into the job post, um, selling the opportunity. What's special about you? What's special about your business? Um, what's special about your clients? Even right. So lots of people will come and work for you because you've got cool clients or because you're in an interesting space. So the main thing is just, you know, don't be like every other job post. Right. Put the effort in. Um, I'm a big fan of including a little intro video at the top of your job post. And you'll see that in the example that I posted earlier on, or just you know, head on over to jobrack.eu and, and have a little look at the, uh, the job post there. You'll see a bit of a variety. Um, but the thing is just put the effort in, right? Put the effort into kind of selling the opportunity and, and why they should want to come to work with. Yep. Totally agree. So we have Charles asking how much money should you be making before making your first hire? <laughs> Good question, Charles. So this is a really kind of tricky one, right? And it depends on what your first hire would be and what your kind of constraint is, right? So you've obviously got to, you have to have enough to live, right? So if you, if you need to be funded by your business, then you've got to cover that. And it's always, typically most people will hire too late, okay? Or they won't hire early enough. And so that's where if you can hire from regions of the world like Eastern Europe, where they, you know, it's very, very affordable. And if you start by hiring part-time, you can get things off your plate that allows you to develop your business faster. So oftentimes the first hire for, you know, if you're running a, an SEO business, it might be that you hire a virtual assistant to help take things off your plate. It might be that you hire a, you know, kind of a link builder, kind of what are the things that are relatively low cost that can get you started? Equally, the, the other view is that sometimes actually what you should do is hire an expensive person first because they're actually going to move the needle more, but that's generally less comfortable, right? Because it takes more of your revenue and more of your money. And it, it's harder. It's, it's kind of harder to, to kind of know you're making the right decision. So what most people do is they'll look and they'll say, right, if I had someone for three or four hours a day for maybe five dollars an hour or six dollars an hour, you're talking about spending four or five hundred dollars a month. It's not a huge amount of money. You can make a really, really big difference and free a lot of your time up to get out there, bring more clients in, um, you know, improve the service. So, you know, I would normally say at the point that you can spare two, three, four hundred dollars a month you can start bringing someone in and actually taking, freeing up 10 hours of your time, that makes a huge difference, right? If you then spend those productively on the right things, then you can, you know, really, really grow your business. Definitely, I agree. So David asking here, what are red flags I should look for when interviewing candidates? If they say that they, their webcam is broken, right? So no excuses, video interviews, right? They say their webcam is broken, say, no worries, let's rearrange. Any pushback, it's bullshit, right? Um, any pushback, you know, they might, the webcam might be broken, but they'll happily rearrange. You know, if you find a remote worker that doesn't have a smartphone with a camera, right, that's not willing to use that, then there's, that's the red flag. So that's the number one, right? If they're not willing to jump on a camera with you, that is the single one. Apart from that, we find, you know, the vast majority of people are really, really trustworthy, right? They're good people. They want to do a good job. Um, you'll get a feeling for it pretty quickly. But so that's that's the main one. Just, you know, if they won't come on camera for some reason, you know, and you give them an opportunity to reschedule, then, you know, just disqualify them. Yeah. And just to add to that one, one of the ones I definitely look at as well is if you don't have the internet connection to run a decent camera connection, you probably will struggle to work online. So that one's relevant as well. Excellent. So there's a couple of questions here from Anu. And saying i'm a digital market influencer with lots of followers should i hire a seo for my business or use my influence mm. i guess that's more a question if they should hire an seo so i guess that's not super relevant to recruit. yeah well i guess it's i mean ultimately it comes down to how you want to grow your business so um you're an influencer i it depends what your main channels are right and kind of the kind of people how are people finding you whether it's you know Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, your own sites, etc. So it depends on, you know, if you think there's opportunity, are people searching for the kind of content that's going to lead them to you? Um, you just got to think about, yeah, what's your, I guess, your customer acquisition strategy or your audience acquisition strategy and think about where they might be. If SEO is one of those, then absolutely, you could hire someone 
um, either hire someone directly like an SEO analyst or a specialist to kind of do the work for you and be on your team um, or a, an agency of, of which there's many um, kind of here at the summit that could that could help you as well. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the key things as you alluded to is the fact that uh, I mean, there's many growth opportunities, right? Often the biggest growth opportunity is, is freeing yourself up. So mm -hmm. if you're a social media influencer, obviously it's probably hard to put someone else on the camera or whatever if you're doing lives like we are right now. But, um, you know, if you're sitting, spending a ton of time doing social media tasks, like posting things and so on, you might be able to hi hire someone that can help with that so that you can do other things, right? So I think that's... Uh, and a similar question from Anno, is social media presence more important or hiring an SEO when currently have zero presence? So the answer is pretty much the same to that one. And then we have Lisa here. So Lisa's asking, I've hired a couple of times. I thought I was doing a great job interviewing, but the candidates didn't work out when sorry she have some very sad faces um when hiring what is the key thing to look for to avoid failure so really to uh, point out some red flags mm -hmm. and i think that's it's similar to the red flag one but what what i mean if you have if you have hired a couple of times and then fail i totally get how that can bring your confidence down mm -hmm. and make you uncomfortable going into it again, right? I know a few people in that role. So have you been there and what's your advice in a situation like that? Yeah, so the main thing is to think about why did it fail? And I have been there, right? I've been there. I can think of a couple of developers particularly. Um, why did it fail? So think about each one that's not worked out. Why didn't it work? And then what could you have done during the interview to dig into it? So for instance, if it didn't work out because they just didn't have the technical skills, then how could you have tested them better? How could you have reviewed them better? If they didn't have the attitude, really, if they just weren't working hard enough, then again, how can you ask questions like, you know, when have they kind of gone over and above or above and beyond, right, to uh, kind of work really hard? Um, so thinking back, you've got some great insight now, right, or you can get some great insight. So think about these instances that you've had, what went wrong, okay, or what was the issue, and then drill back and then go, how could you identify that and ask them about it? Um, and you could use them as examples, right? You could be interviewed and you could say, hey, so... Uh, I had this instance, I hired this person and they didn't work out because of X, Y, and Z. You know, what do you, how would I, um, you know, in your opinion, you know, how do you think you'd handle these situations? And so you can actually use these stories and these examples in interviews with other candidates. Yeah, love that, love that. So the next one here is I hired a graphic designer. I looked at the portfolio and it looked okay. However, when doing the graphic design, people tell me it's not great. I'm not really an expert in graphic design myself. So what's your advice in terms of hiring people that uh, for a role that I don't understand myself? Mm. So two things. Uh, by the sounds of it, you've got some people that do understand what good graphic design looks like. Okay, so next time you hire a graphic designer, when you ask them to do provide a portfolio or provide a sample or get them to do a test, run it by those people. Say, hey, I'm testing a new graphic designer and what do you think about these, these things? Um, you can even do that using your social profile, right? So just post it on Facebook and say, hey, I'm hiring a new gra uh, graphic designer. These are some of the samples. What do you think? Um, you know, kind of get people's opinions. And then the other thing you can do is try and get help. So get help from someone that is an expert in hiring those things. So here at JobRack, we have uh, a team and a network of developers, designers, UX specialists, project managers that we kind of lean on when we're hiring for those roles to help us kind of really evaluate those people. Um, we've got some of those skills on staff and then some of them we kind of lean on. So for instance, when we're hiring a developer, I'm not a developer. We've got really great recruiters that can look for skills and experience, but we now do technical screening interviews using a developer to screen another developer. So you know, look for people that can help you. So whether that's us here at JobRack, we'd happily do that for you. And we know what good design looks like. And we've got some really great people on the team. Um, or, you know, again, look for someone else that could, uh, you know, kind of help you with that more, maybe a more technical element of interviewing um, and giving you that advice. But something like a graphic designer, if it's just that you haven't got much of an eye for design, and you know, sometimes I, I struggle with that a little bit personally, so that's why I have people to help me with that. Um, just ask people for opinions. In graphic design, everyone loves to vote on a, a new design for a landing page or a logo or a book cover or whatever it might be. So you know, use your use your network. Yeah. 
next one here. Peter is saying, I have not enjoyed hiring an Upwork much as people constantly keep getting job offers even after I hired them. What is your preferred hiring platform or what do you recommend? So it depends what you're hiring for. <clears throat> so if you're looking to hire a freelancer, Upwork's amazing, right? If you're looking to hire for a project base, Upwork, Fiverr, they're great. If you want to hire a long-term team member, then they're not so great. So either you, you know, if you were to go through Upwork, then make it clear that you're looking for a long-term team member and say, you know, you'd be looking for them to come off Upwork and how do they feel about that? Um, bear in mind, it's also, it's okay for them to still do some work on the side. You know, even if they're working full-time for you, that's the nature of the modern world. Lots of people have a side gig and actually that can be a, a great benefit. Um, generally for me, you know, we have our own platform, right? And we do a huge amount of effort and work in going out and sourcing candidates. So, you know, Yes, you can hire on job boards and you can get great results, including on, on job rack. But oftentimes the really tough roles, we have to go out and find them. So headhunting and going into very specific communities and Slack channels and messenger groups and all kinds of things to find the, the kind of the A players and get them. Because oftentimes the A players, they're not hanging out on job boards waiting for your job to kind of appear and for them to apply to. So we do a lot of active uh, kind of proactive sourcing. So I think the key thing, though, is just set an expectation that you're looking for a long term employee, long term team member. Um, making that really clear throughout and talking about it openly in the job post and um, yeah, going going from there. But yeah, Upwork can be tricky that because it's you know it's a shop window and people like to keep their profile. So a lot of it's about trust and just seeing what do they want. A lot of freelancers, especially especially when they turn and look for a permanent job, it's because they're tired of the constant hustle and constant pitching for work. So you know, you looking for a long term person is a is a selling point in itself. Okay. Then I have Andrea asking this is a great question. So how do I know what I should be paying? I've been hiring people both in Asia, in Europe and in Africa previously. And I feel I've maybe been overpaying, but how do you figure out what the right salary is for the relevant countries? So it can be tricky. It really, really can be tricky. So first of all is ask people that know, right? So we do this a lot. So if you want to come to us and say, hey, you know, what's the rate right now for this level of person, etc. We'll we'll ask you some questions and we'll help you. We'll guide you for, for Eastern Europe, especially. Um, the you can look at job boards. You can look at jobs that are posted, and a lot of them, you know, most job boards these days push pretty hard to display salary, so that can give you an indication. Um, you can ask your network. You know, if you know other business owners or other SEO uh, SEOs, kind of, you can ask them. Say, hey, what are you paying for for these kind of skills? Um, when it comes to overpaying, I would generally be less worried. You know, do you think you're getting value is the real question. Because although, yes, maybe you could save a few dollars an hour here and there, if you've got an amazing person and they're an A player, then, and they're making money for you, then, hey, honestly, don't sweat it, right? Um, the few dollars an hour that you can save is is not worth it compared to the pain that you can get by having to go through the hiring process for starters. Um, so think about that, something to think about. So definitely don't overpay for mediocre results. But if you're getting great results, then, hey, I'm kind of a fan of it, you know, overpay make sure that they're you know really keen that you're rewarding them etc that would be a yeah i wouldn't worry about that at all yeah and that ties right into the next question so do you always pay set salary or do you ever do bonus payments or performance mm -hmm. rewards so in eastern europe there is not the same cultural 13 month salary like they have in the philippines um so the philippines works on that at christmas you pay them a 13 month salary um, and that's their like their annual bonus of a, of a month's wages um, that same concept doesn't kind of culturally exist in, in Eastern Europe, for instance. However, I really strongly encourage people to pay bonuses because, you know, you want people to be really working hard um, and they should share in the success. And so, yeah, big, big fan of that. Um, recently for my team, um, we'd had a, we'd, it's been a crazy year for us and we've grown hugely and everyone's been working really, really hard. Um, and so I wanted to give them some treats and gifts, but I actually didn't want to do money. I wanted something a little bit more meaningful. So uh, one of my team, uh, I bought a big kind of, I think it was a 24 inch monitor. One of my team, I bought a bunch of photographic equipment because she's doing loads of Instagram work. Um, and another team member who's got all the kit she wants, so I bought her a spa day. So gifts and treats like that can actually be really, really well received and show a little bit more effort than maybe just throwing some money. Um, but yeah, I, I'm also a big fan of kind of monetary kind of bonuses. And, and that's something that we're introducing at, uh, at Job Rec as well. We're looking for that. You know, we want everyone to, you know, kind of benefit from the success of the company. Um, and yeah, there's some great books out there. Uh, Built to Sell is great in this. It talks about how to split the bonus between, you know, so let's say if they're going to get a bonus of $500, you could pay them half of it as a bonus. And then half of them you could put away in an account for them. And they only get to access it in three years time. 
So it works as a long-term incentive as well, which can be quite powerful. So um, there's lots of different models, but yeah, re- always encourage kind of sharing success, right? It, uh, they're working hard. They're enabling you to have the life you want and the, the money you want. So yeah, definitely reward them. Sounds great. Yeah, and the, I think the one thing I'll say and bonuses where I see people screw up the most is is not having clear objectives, right? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it's like, oh, if I feel like giving you a bonus, you'll get a bonus. But the, the thing is, particularly if it's a financial bonus, if we are playing around with people's money, it needs to be very, very clear for them what it takes to get it, all right? As soon as there's a potential for muddy waters or unclear expectations you end up actually making someone unhappy mm. instead of basically having it as a good potential bonus and, and benefit right so so just be super super clear around bonuses generally yeah and it should also line up with the performance of the company so you know you want everyone everyone has to be aligned so you don't want one team member to have a goal that means that they could actually be detrimental to the rest of the team so it should be that the company makes a certain amount of profit and then individually, yeah, that's the trigger point. And then they individually, they achieve on their objectives as well. Yeah. Right. So the last question here. So I currently have around 40 staff, I think. So 40 staff. Uh, I hired 10 more last year. I feel it takes a ton of time off my plate as a business owner to do all the hiring. Um, at what point should I hire someone to do the hiring in my company? <laughs> so really really good question and there are two different aspects of work to be done okay so one is the coordinating of things so things like kind of screening interviews and the kind of the admin effectively that goes around hiring and managing a team of kind of 40 people um and that to be honest you've got 40 people right now depending how kind of slick and how well set up you are. And, you know, it's always a tricky area. You know, you'd likely benefit. Maybe you've already got a virtual assistant or an EA or similar that's kind of doing some of the HR side of things of managing a team that big. Um, And they could potentially be helping you out with that. The other side is actually the, the hard bit of the recruitment side of things. So, you know, crafting the really great job posts, going out and finding the candidates. And that is a point at saying, you know, yes, you could hire for that. But really good recruiters tend to be really expensive. um, And that would be a big cost for you to take on. That is where, trying to not be too biased, but that is where, you know, you should, you could lean on people like me, for instance, and JobRack to add that service to support your internal kind of HR team or your admin team. So uh, we should definitely talk. I'd love to have a chat with you. Happy to kind of bounce that through. So um, yeah, kind of uh, get in touch and um, happy to help you out. Yeah. So one thing I would say as well, so that, I see this happen quite a lot where people are building bigger teams and they the business owner keeps doing all the recruitment. One of my hard and fast, no, just solid rules is that uh, recruitment should always be done by the hiring manager. So I guess if you have a team of 40 people, they're not all reporting to you, I hope. Um, <laughs> if, oh, no. uh, so, so if you have managers within that business, you should really have them doing the hiring. Now, obviously, if they're brand new into management, if they haven't done hiring before, they might not be super experienced and you can support them. But really, as Noel said, I mean, hiring, it's not just the most important thing for a business owner. It's the most important thing in business, right? So if you're training up managers, really your goal is over time that they learn to hire people to work under them, right? So like longer term, any company I have where there's already a senior management team in place like they take care of the hiring for the company i only do the hiring if there's some one of those senior managers leave and they need to be replaced or someone else that reports directly to me right so i think that's another uh, important point to to look yeah, at definitely and, and put the support in place that they are supported so like i said maybe it's an executive assistant and and oftentimes a you know an executive assistant to the ceo becomes like a, a chief of staff right Kind of running and making sure processes like financials and hr etc happen doesn't mean they do it but it makes sure that they happen um yeah. and then that person can then support your other managers when it comes to hiring but then back off the hard work to you know a hiring service or something like that because uh there is going to be times when you should hire in different ways in different places and having all of that skill set in-house is it's not core right generally it's not something you need all of that in and it kind of can get very expensive and actually be quite limiting so uh yeah like i said happy to um always happy to have a chat about that and see kind of how we can help or i can signpost you to other other people as well perfect right now thank you very much for sharing all of your amazing knowledge i'm sure people will look back over this as well so uh, 
thank you very much for joining us today and uh, thank you also for your your great offer that you have for for the audience right so again just before we finish off remember they have a 250 dollars off the next hire you do with job right with that done for you service so great great opportunity to get started with hiring or do even more hiring if you're looking for it and uh, yeah all good sounds good thanks very much matt and i uh, hope everyone enjoyed it and um yeah look forward to helping some of you hire soon perfect Thanks, everyone. Cheers, guys.